What up, players? It's Wall Boss Tab, and this month today we're doing part numero three of how to paint over straw. And today we get the wood grain onto the rifles. We um, do the details such as the parchment paper and the wax seal for the purity seals. And then we do washes, like you can see here. It's gonna look awesome. So the colors you're gonna need are Screaming Skull, um, Dark Angels Green. War Boss Green, Moot Green, Chaos Black, we use just a little bit of it for the, the piping, Arakarth Flesh, and the washes that we use are, oh no, we also do highlighting for the hat, and for that we use Zandri Dust. Yep, that's it. So, Raglan Flesh Shade for the skin, Agrax Earth Shade for all the reds, and the leathers and the silvers and seraphim sepia for uh, the gold. So this is the effect that you should have and um, I hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, welcome to How to Paint a Vostronian Firstborn Part 3. And we are going to start with a dry brush. So get your dry brushes out and where's my dry brush here? I'm going to be using for this the Army Painter small dry brush, very good, very good stuff, but really you don't have to have a dry brush. The, the point of it is that you want an old brush that has the bristles all kind of um, not in a fine point. Uh, if, if it's at a point, then um, the surface area of the paint that you're going to be painting onto the model is going to be very small. What you want for a dry brush is that you're going to get a little bit of paint on all these bristles at the same time, they're going to hit the model. and um, what we're going to be doing is brushing the hats with Zandri dust. So let me show you what that looks like. First thing I do is I dip my brush into the paint and get only about that much right at the very tips. And then you want to wipe it off on your hand or a piece of Kleenex or something, something so that there's not that much on it at all. And then when you put it onto the model, You're going to see that just the very ends of the of the bristles catch and um, deposit the paint onto the model, which is what you want. You want to be able to do this kind of brush stroke where it just goes over the whole thing. At least that's what I learned when doing dry brushing. Uh, so guess what? You're going to be using a lot of uh, or going through a lot of paint when you first start this because you want to make sure that you don't get too much paint onto your model, you want to just make sure that just the paint at the very tips get on there. Okay, and simple as that. So you're going to be doing that for all your models. I know some of your models have golden Aquilas, one of my commenters said that Assassin's Creed is wrong. It's not Aquila, it's Aquilas. So. Um, for that, don't worry about getting your dry brush over that. Um, it's okay. It's okay if you dry brush Zandri dust and stuff over that because we're going to be repainting that little bit of gold later. Uh, after Zandri dust, you're going to go immediately to the next highlight color, which is Rakarth Flesh. So, when doing them assembly line style, like myself, you don't have to worry too much um, about getting about having one paint dry because by the time I get to the end of these guys, the first model will have dried already. So assembly line style for these Vestroians is probably best. And there you have it. So I'm going to do that with all my boys. Let me zoom out a little bit, can't show you. It looks like from a little bit further away. As you can see, you still want that dried bark, that dark brown in the recesses. All right, so we'll come back as soon as all that is done for all of our guys. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting up the wood grain on, on the uh, las guns. So what you're gonna need is Screaming Skull and a brush with a very fine tip. So 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Screaming Skull. Screaming Skull is another one of those very thick paints, lots of pigment. So you're gonna need to use a wet palette or something just to uh, thin down the paint a lot. What you're gonna do is you're going to try and make as fine detailed strokes all going in the same direction as you can. This is on all of the wood parts. So I like to definitely get the, the hard edges, not all the way, but just to kind of show where the where the hard edges of the las gun are see there. You can really tell when I zoom in this much, you can really see how <laughs> how bad it is, uh, but that's okay. Okay, for the front, because of this winged skull, we don't do too much, just little notches. And then here on the bottom, you can do a long one. And then, when you look at the model from underneath, this is really just for practice. For you, you don't have to paint the underneath part of the lads gun, but I like to use it as a as a canvas to practice the the design on. No one's ever really going to pick up your model specifically to look at the at the design on the bottom, but it's just nice to nice to be a completionist. Here on the back is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. So, nice, very thin, thin down lines. So as you can see, I'm basing my hand, or I'm, I'm bracing my hands by putting my palm into the kind of meaty part of my left hand, and then I'm bracing my fingers here and here. So that all I'm really doing is this motion over and over. Look at the way I hold my brush. I know we all hold our brushes differently, but up and down like that. The entire hand is braced so that you don't have to worry about it moving around. If you're using a piece of cork and blue tack, same thing. Just hold it steady, brace your hand, and then boom, boom, boom. All right, so I'm gonna go on and do the rest of these models. Uh, in general, you do the same technique for all the models. Even the um, special weapons like the flamer, like the uh, grenade launcher. I'll take you through those in just a second. So the flamer and the grenade launcher here, they have wooden parts on on them, so you just kind of follow the curve of, of the wooden parts. And thinner, the thinner the better. So if you feel like you make a really big fat pattern that you don't like, just go back over with some Steel Legion drab and rectify it. Now the grenade launcher here for the flamer. It's basically the same thing as Alaskan, you can see. So, I'm just going to paint the horizontal lines. Stick to the lines that are already on it and little notches here by the by the winged skull. And then you can really go to town on the larger flat areas like the top, the back, the the butt or the stock. And there you go. So I'm gonna go through my guys and get all this done. Um, one more thing, while I'm doing this, while I'm going through and doing all this, I'm gonna take either Caliban Green, the new Caliban Green, or the Dark Angels Green from the old range. It's basically the same color, a very dark, uh, solid green color. And you're gonna go and you're gonna find all the guys with gas masks. And you're just going to paint right onto 
the eye lenses. Like that. Okay, so we'll see you in just a little bit. And I forgot to mention one more thing. If you have guys with, let's see if we can find one, purity seals on them, then you're also gonna be painting the wax of the purity seal in Caliban green or dark angel green. So like this guy here, you're gonna have to find them. Sometimes it's like a Where's Waldo picture to find all the purity seals and then just when you think you got them all, you see, oh, right here under the guy's hand, and this uh, stock of his rifle is peeking out a little piece of the wax. So you gotta paint that green, all right? And some of them it's easier to find than others. You just have to give your models a quick turnaround. Right here, here on this guy's front. Some of them are easier to find and some of them you have to look really hard. So green for the purity seals, the um, screaming skull onto all the rifles. And then once the green is dried, and once your uh, wood, wood grain is dried, then we'll come back and we will do the, um, the, the parchment for the, wood, for, the, for the purity seals. And I gotta say that uh, this Vostroyan with the uh, grenade launcher is the most faithful soldier in the entire Imperium. I sat and I counted counted how many eagles he had on on the model and I want to take you guys through it right now because it is it is unbelievable. One eagle, two, oh and we're gonna count iron uh, winged skulls because they're like the the sign of the Aquila but just with the skull instead of a bird. One, two, three, uh, is it this guy? Oh no, it was the flamer guy, it was the flamer guy, it was the flamer guy. Cause he's got winged Aquilas on his boots. One, two, uh, he's got a pendant on his gauntlet. Three, four, a winged skull on the flamer. Five, six on his hat, and um, this one right here at the opening of his coat. Most faithful man in the entire Imperium. Awesome. All right, this next step we do before the washes is moot green for the eye lenses and Rakarth flesh for the purity seals. Something that I don't think I mentioned in my last video is that I used Abaddon Black on these tubes, uh, these tubies, as a girl painting would say, that lead from the flamer to the back. And also for this one, there's one guy with a gas mask that has a tube, Let's see if I can find him. Here, dangling from the chain. So these are the two guys that you, you see right there, would use Abaddon Black for. Now let's get on with the moot green on the islands. Again, you wanna use a very thin tipped brush and we are Sam Fisher it up. Try to stick right to the center if you can. Creates a very uh, alien, uh, non-human looking effect, which is what we want. One of the interesting things about the, the, I guess the story, the fluff, Warhammer 40,000 is how the Emperor of Mankind, when he was trying to unite humanity, he was looking for this uh, golden age of humanity, unity, brotherhood, all that good stuff. And after the Horus Heresy and he got thrown on the golden throne, now everybody is just like, Humanity is number one, and they're super fascist, and they, they hate everybody, and it almost uh, is like the exact 
opposite of what the Emperor imagined for the Imperium when he put it together. At least that's my take on it. I, I think some people would disagree with that, but I think that is the most interesting take because it means that uh, that, that makes it even more grim and dark that the Emperor was uh, looking for this very peaceful and positive and um, you know that kind of civilization oh, I also forgot this guy has an islands too so silver with the lead belcher then dark angels and loot green and then uh, his Imperium has turned out to be this very like you're either with us or there or we or we kill you and you have to worship the Emperor or we kill you and you have to hate everything that is not human or will kill you kind of totalitarian government so ironic don't you think don't you think honey buns <laughs> take it away joe <clears throat> i said take it away joe It's like rain on your wedding day. Alright, that's enough, Igor. But I like to sing. And there is his island. So he's got like this one piece of Adeptus Mechanicus machinery like screwed into his face, but he's still kind of human. It's just really creepy looking. Uh, we're also getting some Abaddon Black to darken up the wires bleeding from his head. Ooh man, I can't wait till they come out with some more ad mech stuff. Adeptus Mechanicus. When I was getting back into Warhammer, I remember seeing a white dwarf where somebody had kit bashed like an Adeptus Mechanicus army. And I thought, what the? The flip and flip is this? It looks ridiculous. And now I want it so bad. It looks so cool. <laughs> it looks so cool. All right, uh, what was I doing? What was I doing, honey? Rock hard flesh for the purity seals. Thank you. Rock hard flesh for the purity seals. Uh, we're gonna go out. <laughs> We've been cooped up all day. We're gonna go out. Uh, but first, I'm gonna paint these purity seals, son. been watching Eddie Izzard on Netflix. So funny. <laughs> I enjoy, um, I love Netflix. It's like a treasure trove, just waste your time um, watching all sorts of ridiculous things, like stand-up comedy. All right, so this, this guy you've got under his arm and down here. So I want to make sure you get that. Uh, yeah. This guy, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hoganovich. He's got one like right under his shoulder pad. So that's a, that's a tricky one to get to. Uh, if you don't know it's there. Oh, this guy's got two special. I remember reading a book, I think it was in the Imperial Guard Omnibus number one. I think this must have come out right around the time that the Vestroians were released because they were featured pretty heavily in I think two of the stories. And I remember reading these two stories and not really caring much for them. I, I think the reason they were included was because Games Workshop said to the uh, black library guy, hey, we, we released these, this new range of like Russian looking models, we need you to write about them. And the guy must have been like, what? Uh, yeah, all right, whatever. Because when you read it, it could really be anyone. It could have been Cadians, Catechins, it could have been anyone that he included. Uh, it just was like shoehorned in there. Thing with these old paints, they really bleed. I 
Okay, so for the purity seals, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take my favorite color, War Boss Green, and you're gonna paint over the purity seals, uh, just over the raised areas and a little dot in the center. So let's find here. If we can focus on the purity seal, we're gonna get the raised areas on the edges and then put a little dot in the center. You might not be able to get that dot in the center, especially if it's sculpted, if it's not sculpted. Like some of these purity seals have like this little dot sculpted in the center. It's really easy to reach. Some of them don't. It's just a hollow indentation in the center. So uh, you should just take your time. And if you are not able to get that little spot in the center, just do as, as best as you can. You just want to make sure you do not slather the thing with War Boss Tay Green. As great as it is as a color, you don't want to take away from that dark green base coat for the wax. I think we're just about ready for washes. So let's get to it and then we'll finish up this video. The main wash that you're going to be using is Agrax Earthshade. And this is going to go, or the main two washes, let's talk about the two washes. Seraphim Sepia for all the gold, for the brass, and Agrax Earthshade for the red, the wood, uh, and the hats. Find a good brush that we can use. We'll start with Agrax Earthshade. And we will start with the hats. Babe, what did you say these hats are supposed to be? Like bear? You say they're supposed to be like bear skin? These hats? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, also the shoes, don't forget the shoes. And Agrax Earth Shade. When you look at the older pictures, the heavy metal pictures of their um, Vastroians, you'll see that it really looks like they did one coat of red paint and then they just slathered like four or five coats of, of known, not known oil, bad eye black and uh, Devlin mud on it because it just looks so washed, washed out. Also, any of the um, leather pouches, it's gonna get Agrax Earth Shade as well. And here on the last gun, the wood of the last gun. So you see that if you went really big and kind of sloppy with the wood grain effect, the Agrax Earth Shade really kind of tones it down and brings it together. Okay, so that's all the Agrax Earth Shade. I would suggest doing all of this and then letting it sit and letting it dry before attempting to do the Seraphim Sepia. <clears throat> but uh, that's a lot easier to do if you've if you're going in assembly line style, you could just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By the time you come back to number one for the seraphim sepia for the golds, then uh, it should be just about dry. Or you just take a break and do like a half hour break, watch TV, um, walk your dog, whatever. But I'll, now I'll show you how the seraphim sepia is going to go on. Get a little bit of it onto your brush, and then boom, right there. You'll see that it has this very awesome reddish kind of tinge to it and that is amazing. You don't have to get it on all of the gold, the wider surface areas really uh, kind of bring it out so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, as much as you can, like get it onto the gauntlets, get it onto the elbow guards, get it onto the shoulder pads, get it onto the, gaunt yeah, like the gauntlets, the bottom of the rifle, 
the uh, casing of the last gun if you can, and then, um, and then on the back if they've got a knife holster. You're also going to take the Seraphim Sepia and you're going to wash the knife holster with it. And this is going to make it create a very cool aged bone look. If you did it with Agrax Earthshade, it would just kind of dirty it up. And that is our Guardsman. We're gonna also do Seraphim Sepia on his Hulk Hogan mustache. Agrax Earthshade, oh I forgot, Agrax Earthshade on all the purity seals to give it a very aged parchment kind of look. The, the, the um, wax we're just gonna leave green, we're not gonna do anything to it. Purity seal is gonna get a little bit of that Agrax Earthshade and you should have your Raiklin Flesh Shade also, because for any of the guys with faces showing, this is going to go on their face, and you don't want a big fat wash brush for this. You want your little detail brush so that you can kind of move it around, because it is really easy for you to uh, put too much shade on the tip of your brush, and then it really obscures the detail of the face. You don't want to do that. And there you have it, players. This is part three. We got all the details done. We worked the wood grain and we got the washes on. So we'll see you in part four where we do final highlights and we finish up your How to Paint of a Storm. Latest, players.